Greetings and salutations, internet friends, and welcome back to another episode of the First Time Film Club. My name is Emily, your titular first timer. This is Matthew, my husband, Cinema Sherpa, and viewer submitted title. <laughs> Matthew, gotta see this. I like it. Nailed it. I like the wordplay. I also like the uh, username that this was submitted by. Caffeine Advocate. So oh. thank you for that, Caffeine <laughs> Advocate. Um, I'm trying to cut back. Yeah, trying, <laughs> trying to. It's a struggle. And also, this is Pippin. He's our cat. He's fabulous. And that's about all there is to say to that. <laughs> Um, for mm -hmm. those of you new to the channel, hello, welcome. What we're doing here is working our way through a very long list of movies that typically I haven't seen, but that Matthew has. Uh, that being said, Matthew, I know that this is a Patreon poll winner. Mm -hmm. What is the movie we're watching today? Today we are watching the 1993 action science fiction film Demolition Man. And as per usual, I only give you the year, title, and genre. You go in with what you already know. You let everybody know what you know, and then we watch and discuss. So, what do you know about Demolition Man? I know this is a Sylvester Stallone flick because yes. it was on the. It was on the Stallone pole. Stallone pole. Um, I'm pretty sure that Wesley Snipes is in this also, which I'm pretty excited about. I, I, I enjoy me some Snipes, some Mr. Wesley, if you're nasty. That's not what he calls himself. <laughs> Pippin hated that so much he ran away. Um, Don't blame him. <laughs> uh, I have no clue what the movie's about. Um, uh, when we put the poll together, I was like, I had a vague impression of everything else on the poll except for this movie. So... Oh, really? I don't know. We'll see. All right, then. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. You said science fiction. So I'm like, oh, oh, that's decidedly different from the other movies that were on the poll. So, okay. <laughs> I was hoping maybe to get a little tease or something out of him. No. Nope. He never does. Still trapped. <laughs> well, that's okay. I, if you're ready, I'm ready. I am ready. The only other thing is for first time viewers, you may see me with my phone in my hand during the movie. That's because I'm taking notes on things to discuss afterwards. And with that being said, I'm ready to watch. All right, let's do it. <gasps> oh my. The maniac hijacked a municipal bus with 30 passengers on it. Simon Phoenix. Okay, so it's LAPD in what looks to be Terminator times. <laughs> a little bit of a post-apocalyptic. Okay. As you could tell by the Hollywood sign being on fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Classic <was> trope. <laughs> This is a pretty good indicator. Send the maniac to catch one. Oh! <laughs> oh, we are off to a start. Yes. Oh! Oh! Oh, he is not to be messed with. He's got striped pants and a checkered jacket. Get out of there, Sly. Don't move, Phoenix. Uh oh. You're under arrest. <laughs> arrest? Shit. He's under the influence. Where are the hostages? To hell with the hostages. Is it cold in here? Or is it just me? Oh no. Was this directed by Tim Burton? Where are they, Phoenix? Nope. Now where did I put him? <laughs> I swear, I'd lose my head if he wasn't attached. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. He does unhinged so well. I just love it. They really splodulated that building, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We are off to a start, y'all. Damn it, John. I'm tired of this demolition, man. Ah, he's at the thing. <laughs> Title drop. So where are the hostages? They're not here. What do you mean they're Lethal not weapon? here? Lethal weapon? Uh-huh. Okay. So how do you Good know job. they weren't in there? Because I did a thermal check and there was only eight of them. All part of his game. Bodies everywhere. There must be 20 or 30. Uh-oh. See that, Captain? I told him. He said he didn't care. You got a lawyer. You better call. What? What? What did he do? He blew up the hostages. He didn't blow up shit! But Simon the Phoenix said he blew up the hostages. <laughs> I'm so confused. This seems a very loose plot point, but okay. Sandy Bullock! Oh, Sandy B. 
Sergeant Spartan, you've been sentenced to 70 years, sub-zero rehabilitation in the California Cryo Penitentiary. What? Yeah. He don't get to lay down? He got a crouch for 70 years? Shit. It's okay. I think that's like liquid oxygen. You can breathe it. Sure. Science fiction, right? <gasps> Penis? <laughs> Oh, oh well, that don't look great. I feel like there's got to be a nicer way to, to do that, you know. I gotta tell you, this is not what I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. I am flabbergasted. The prisoners are ice cubes. They never move. I find this lack of stimulus to be truly disappointing. Things don't happen anymore. We've taken care of all that. Hmm. I'll fiber off you back after the morning parole hearings. Don't love the dialogue. <laughs> what the hell? Sh shut up. What? <laughs> that doesn't really matter anymore, does it, Carl? People are hungry. We got nothing left to lose. Is that Dennis? Mm-hmm. Dennis, what are you doing? Greetings, Erwin. Lovely Lenina. Greetings and salutations. Wait a minute! Welcome to the emergency line of the San Angeles Police Department. What is this movie? <laughs> Welcome to the 90s. Sanctimonious asshole. Actually, you are fined one half credit for a sotto voce violation of the verbal morality statute. Thank you. Oh, okay. I would not make it very long in this society. Mm -mm. It was rendered obsolete. Rendered obsolete, though. Do you have anything fresh to say on your behalf? I do. Teddy bear. <laughs> Let's get this over quickly. <gasps> oh! You well? Yeah. You too. I got a question. Sure. Is this a fair Hooven movie? Nope. MDK. Murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill. Murder, death, kill. Last recorded offense, September 20. Tell me all seven. Is a doctor's conveyance still in the parking zone? The answer is no. Car missing. Unit 12, protect, sir. Apprehend fugitive. Proceed with extreme assertiveness. Assertiveness? I hate it. <laughs> what is happening? The name, the name friendly, friendly, Edgar, friendly, Edgar, friendly. friendly. Don't you have a job to do? So, all this is what got implanted into him while he was frozen. Mm hmm. You. I'm sorry. Is he a superhuman? What? Mm. John Spartan? That's right. Simon Phoenix is an old-fashioned criminal. We need an old-fashioned cop. Cryoplex 312 and 618. This is so weird. It's, mm -hmm. it's like a combination of like Total Recall and Fifth Element and giving me vague Batman vibes. Like the color scheme and the overall like design of the sci-fi aspect, you know? Mm -hmm. I could see some of that. Detective? Detective, I am Lieutenant Lenina. The costumes are freaking me out. They're giving me real Third Reich vibes, and I, it's just such an odd combination of things. Look, I don't know if you guys know it, but you're, uh, you're out of toilet paper. The place where you're supposed to have the toilet paper, you got this little shelf with three seashells on it. <laughs> he doesn't know how to use the three seashells. The, 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 what the hell? Yes. Mm -hmm. So much for the seashells. Uh, see you in a few minutes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you see, he's gonna wipe his bottom. Oh, I didn't get it. With the. <laughs> <laughs> but why would he do that when he has the three seashells? I want to know how do you use the seashells. I'll tell you later. Okay. The only place a person can even view a gun in this city is. At a museum. 
Mm-hmm. Perhaps you'd like to hear an oldie station. Oldies? Oh, what a relief! Oh, this is the most what popular station in town. Wall-to-wall -to -wall mini tunes. You call them commercials. Oh, wow. This is my fave. <laughs> oof. <laughs> oof, my goof. You gotta wait that 15 day waiting period? <laughs> or can I just like take one now? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Rambo, I need to borrow this. That's another movie. Mm hmm. That is. <laughs> Spartan? John Spartan? Oh, shit, they let anybody into this century. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> Too. Everybody's got guns. Well, no, just them two. Those two have guns. <laughs> You're on TV. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. The one-liners are woo. Great. Sir, the stress breeder is inside, being demobilized as we speak. Now, don't you have a job to do? Isn't that a thought repeating in that barbaric brain of yours? Don't you have someone to kill? Oh, he's the bad guy. You don't know how lucky you are that Maniac didn't whack you. Well, I must say that whacking, whatever it is, sounds most disagreeable. <laughs> well, you scared him away. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Phoenix knows he has some competition. He's finally matched his meat. You really licked his ass. Stop it. That's met his match. Please, I insist. I would like you to accompany me to Taco Bell. What? Look forward to it. it is. Now, Phoenix could be anywhere, but not being Cody could hurt him and limit his options. But with all officers already patrolling in a citywide crisis net, it should be just a matter of TikToks before we actually... More importantly, <laughs> we already have a backup plan. We can just wait for another code to go red. Kill. I've been an enthusiast of your escapades for quite some time now. I have, in fact, perused some newsreels from the Schwarzenegger Library. And that time that you took that car... Hold it. <laughs> the Schwarzenegger Library? Yes, the Schwarzenegger Presidential Library. Wasn't he an actor when Stop. you... Stop. He was That's... president? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious on so many levels. He didn't become president, but he did become a governor! <laughs> Shit, I love that smell. Reminds me of biscuits and gravy. What? <laughs> Don't know where you eating, bruh, but... <laughs> Taco Bell was the only restaurant to survive the franchise wars. So? So? Now all restaurants are Taco Bell. Huh? No way. Oh. What? <laughs> what? Greetings and salutations. I'm Associate Bob. I feel seen. Okay. What would you say if I called you a brutish fossil? Symbolic of a decayed era. Beetlejuice. Gratefully mm -hmm. forgotten. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I, I thought during the <laughs> the prisoners were not conscious. <laughs> You're gonna regret this the rest of your life. Both seconds of it. Oof, oof, oof. And the joy, joy way you pause to make a glib witticism before doing battle with that strangely weapon scrapped in those roundhouse punches. Honestly, look, this isn't the Wild West, okay? <laughs> Hurting people's not a good thing. Sometimes it is, but <laughs> people looking for something to eat. You know, I keep looking around and I think about my daughter growing up in a place like this. I could do a search no. for you. All right. So where will I, I feel be? like? Oh, I procured you a domicile right down the corner from my own. I got you a room down the hall. That's all you gotta say, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Not in the future. Um, I was wondering if you would like to have sex. <laughs> um I don't like this. I don't like this. Why? Um Love boat. <laughs> For some reason I thought that he was I thought she was gonna be his daughter. Like I thought like There you go. Damn, what kind of sex you having? You gotta pull out the headgear. Shit. <laughs> I'll begin in a few seconds. Begin what? Having sex, of course. Stop! What's wrong? 
you broke contact. Con contact? I didn't touch you yet. But I, I thought you wanted to make love. Is that what you call this? No, it's called a seizure. I almost had a seizure. High order fluid transfer? I mean, bony, the, the wild mambo, the, the hunk of chunk. Oh, the no hunk of chunk. What happened? Exchange of body. Not even, not even mouth transfer is condoned. Kissing's not allowed. Oh. Damn, I was a good kisser. <laughs> oh, he doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> Behavioral engineering. Hmm? Martin, you know, I was thinking. Titties! <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry about last night. He's. Uh, Here, I made this for you. You knitted a sweater? An entire sweater in, in one night. That behavioral modification, some pretty good stuff. For each inmate, the computer draws up a skill or trade which best suits their genetic disposition. I was seamstress? For the band. For the band. I love you. <laughs> Who develops these programs? Well, Cocteau Industries, of course. No, John Spine, you do not accuse the savior of our city of being connected with a multi-murder death killer like Simon Phoenix. It's rude. <laughs> rude. Enjoy your moment of prehistoric bravado, because after you leave here, it will be over, like everything else in your life. Officer, return this man to cryostasis immediately. Be well. Oh. Be f Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! Do I know what I gotta do? I gotta nail that maniac and put him on ice. That's what I'm gonna be. Enhance your calm, John Spark. Look, I've had it with enhancing my calm. <laughs> Calmer than you are. <laughs> I'm with you. Let's go blow this guy. Stop it. Away. Blow this guy away. Whatever. Entirely different things. Mm -hmm. I prefer the former. <laughs> oh, oh God. Uh, this is fantastic. You guys gotta try oh this. My. Just don't ask where the meat comes from. <clears throat> que es esta carne? Esta carne es de rata. Hey, look. It's cooked. It's fine. Rat meat's rat meat. Not bad. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> A 1970 Oldsmobile 442. I'm impressed. I studied. So did I. Uh-oh. It's Dennis Leary. You're the guy outside Taco Bell. According to Cocteau's plan, I'm the enemy. I'm into freedom of speech and freedom of choice. I want to run through the streets naked with green jello all over my body reading Playboy magazine. Why? Because I suddenly might feel the need to. Okay, pal? I've seen the future. You know what it is? It's a good Friday night. <laughs> we get to kill... The man who put most of us behind the freezer. You mean we get to kill John Spartan? Exactly. <laughs> is that Steve Austin? No. But it is a wrestler. Okay. I mean, this is just straight up Batman and Robin right here, you know? Like. Now I want to watch Blade again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Buckle up. This is bonkers and I love it. Remember those 40 bus passengers that you flew apart trying to catch me? They were already dead. <sighs> You're dead, Spartan. Speak for yourself. Oh. Break. Break. Stop. Break now, you Mickey Mouse Mickey Shit! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What? That's fine, What do you think it is, hot plate? Oh. Oh. Yeah. What the hell happened all of a sudden? This car turned into a cannoli. <laughs> Done but Relax. Relax. Well, look at you. Oh, -ho. And you think you're Pancho Villa? Hold me two guns. Do you use these weapons of mass destruction against men and women who uphold the law? We use these weapons to shop for groceries. <laughs> Chief, you can take this job and you can shovel it. Nope. Take this job and shovel it. Yeah. Close enough. Close. Yeah. Yep. The sentiment better. was there. Yeah. That's what you remind me of. 
an evil Mr. Rogers. Will you please <laughs> kill him? He's pissing me off. Yeah, you really didn't think this through, huh? What shall I do with you? Huh, Bobby? I am an excellent associate, sir. <laughs> 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 Inflict violence, Huxley! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> anyway, where the hell did you learn to kick like that? Oh, um, Jackie Chan movies? Uh. <laughs> I now understand that under certain circumstances that violence is necessary. Good. Oh. What do we have left that's good, huh? Jeffrey Dahmer? I love this guy! Look, we gotta get him. How long before the rest are done? What? Oh, we doing the suit up, eh? Send the maniac to catch a maniac. Oh! <laughs> Not necessarily a suit up. Just a beret. Just a beret. Uh-oh. It's the claw. <laughs> <laughs> Lasers, y'all. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't cross the streams. Nice. Is it cold in here, or is it just me? Oh, that's what he said. Good memory. The, the mm -hmm. clap. That was rough. This is the best day of my life. Oh. Heads up! Oh! <laughs> you remember when he said he'd lose his head if it wasn't attached? I remember. And I keep that mind. Pay off. <laughs> what will we do? How will we live? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna go out drinking, all of us get shit faced, and paint the town literally. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna do. Why don't you get a little dirty? You will like to clean. And somewhere in the middle, I don't know, you'll figure it out. Fucking A. Oh, oh, oh! I'm Associate Bob, and may I say it would be a great pleasure to assist you in creating. Let's talk about the hair, okay? Hair? <laughs> Pick a color, all right? You lose a kimono, you look like a couch. <laughs> Thank you for rendering me unconscious. Huxley, I did it for your own good. You're supposed to be a team. We are. Oh, no. <gasps> okay. Um. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Are all fluid transfer activities like this? Better. Better? Why? I still don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. But there's just one thing I want to know. Hmm. How's that damn three seashell thing work? Wait, that's it? Mm hmm. I mean, what else do you want? <laughs> um. So that was Demolition Man. Overall thoughts? I'm gonna need a few TikToks to like <laughs> think this through. <laughs> Just a matter of TikToks. Oh my god. Go so that was an experience. First off, overall, I enjoyed that. But for a very um masochistic mentality like I, I enjoyed it because I hated it <laughs> oh, I, <see. laughs> I mean it was very um very 90s very oh there was a lot going on uh -huh. I oh there's so much to unpack in this movie <laughs> okay first off him going to jail in general was bonkers to me well that's because Simon Phoenix set him up Framed him. Okay. Um, I mean, it was very, it was glossed over real quick in the car chase scene. But, you know, in the beginning, he said he did a thermo scan of the building and there were only eight people in there, all his gang. And uh -huh. then there was like, no, there's 20 or 30 more dead bodies. Yeah. It's because Simon Phoenix had already killed them. Yeah. And had frozen them somehow or had them all nice to where the thermo scan didn't pick them up and framed John Spartan. The thing that doesn't make sense <laughs> is that they just didn't look into that at all didn't like really look this... into it and they kind of 
from from the way it was edited, it kind of made it seem like they just took time and Phoenix as word. Like I tried to tell him and he didn't care. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Well, that makes sense. He blows stuff up all the time. He's yeah. the demolition man. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Go ahead. Shit. Yeah. There's. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. There's just so much. Um. The costume choices. The. The whole like aesthetic of this movie was. I I desperately want to watch this again because okay. I'm certain that I have missed some really good nuggets, you know, some just really legit pieces. The dialogue was painful. <laughs> I I get it. Now, did you not feel that it was like in an ironic sense or it was meant I to did. be like I silly d- and very much kind of like satirical in a sense yeah. um but it was just like oh my god it was so much like it was almost it, it almost went past the sarcasm you know like it was came out the other side annoying um a little bit but i understand the the premise of it i understand that it was in fact intended to be kind of, you know satirical sort of type thing but right yeah uh, the dialogue, like those parts kind of didn't bother me the only thing that really bothered me is the it's like the unnecessary inventions of new ways to say things yeah like it'll only be a matter of tiktoks just say time or they're uh basically facetiming with people we're going i'll fiber up you later yeah you can just say i'll call i'll call like, like or we're trying my favorite is murder death kill yes what I don't understand what is the purpose of using all three of uh, the, the, the the nomenclature is very yeah it's unique. like killing is murder murder and killing result in death they're all why do you need all of them what what what, what is the necessity there yeah um, that's what I mean by like unnecessary yeah. uh, nomenclature uh, to show how society has changed oh taco bell commercials virtual sex they had a real uncle itchy kind of moment there um (laughs) that i wasn't prepared like luckily i don't have like you know photosensitivity or anything but man the the flashing was that was intense i'm you know what i just need to go ahead we need to just put this out there i still think that's his daughter like okay uh it's not okay there were a lot of subplots and scenes deleted and one was where he actually did meet his daughter okay and it was the woman in the underground when the fight was going on when simon phoenix showed up that he was protecting Uh that was actually his daughter okay but the way it's edited in this very much seems like you can read it as Huxley as his daughter. Like, she's so enamored with that time period. and She's she so knows... enamored with that time period, and she is looking for action. You could say it's in her blood. Like... Uh, there's the scene where Cocteau is telling Stallone, uh, you know, your family's dead, your past is dead. And when he says that, it cuts yeah, to her. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, maybe it's not. <laughs> So, so that's so you could definitely read it as that was the vibe I got, and I guess like there's a part of me that if they cut the meeting his daughter scene, they should have just cut the whole daughter thing the entirely. Whole yeah, exactly. Like because it left that open ended question of like that's why I asked is that the end? Because they never did anything with the daughter. Like and there was a another subplot that was like cut that kind of left it like you say open ended with the rest of the uh the rest of Simon Phoenix's crew that he unthawed yeah. which where did they go who one of them you asked was stone cold it wasn't it was Jesse Ventura oh, who okay. was a wrestler so okay close you, enough you were close <laughs> you pulled a, a Huxley a, a for effort okay <laughs> yeah I got a Huxley okay but yeah there was a whole like deleted scenes where uh, there was a fight between Stallone and them and they were taken out because in this way I mean I guess maybe they blew up in the building but you didn't really see it so they could have just yeah escaped and be out there so the if y'all weren't aware the the poll that was done for the patrons it was rocky first, first blood, blood and demolition man and judge dread. dread judge dread nailed it mm-hmm. i know just enough about rocky and first blood and i've seen dread so i had a i had a 
You seen the Carl Urban dread? Uh, for the Carl Urban, the dread. most recent. Yeah. So I had an idea of what to expect from all of those. Even if I had an idea of what to expect from this, it would not have been enough to prepare me. <laughs> um, let's talk about notes. All right. So when the movie started, uh, when uh, Stallone jumped out of the helicopter, landed on the roof, and that whole thing, you were like, oh, we're just starting right just, off. Just yeah. bungee jumped right on out of the helicopter. Uh, yeah. In the original script, it was starting with Stallone being unfrozen. And then uh, one of the screenwriters was like, we need to do a prologue to kind of get a sense of their history. Yeah. So that was added in. Okay. <laughs> After this, there was an idea of a prequel floated to do a prequel of their like history, like show them how the they got through that point. Of, because yeah. yeah, the way it started off is with a lot of action. Like the way it started off would be the ending uh -huh. of that movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to see that movie. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, the screenwriter said there needs to be a prologue to show their history because uh, he was quoted as saying, <laughs> if you don't show Kansas, then Oz doesn't seem all that spectacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to so have a baseline. you got to show where it came from. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. The fight scenes, especially with uh, Wesley Snipes, mm -hmm. They had that same issue with a lot of people who are trained in martial arts when they start doing films. They had too fast. He had to slow down because it would just look all blurry, mm -hmm. which sometimes that comes through in the fight scene. It looks a little mm -hmm. like, janky-ish. Mm -hmm. There was whenever uh, Stallone asks Huxley, you know, where did you learn to fight like that? She said, I watched Jackie Chan movies. It's funny because Stallone wanted Jackie Chan to play the role of Simon Phoenix originally. What? Yes. No. Yes. Uh, but Jackie Chan declined. Yeah. Because, because it, he's Jackie Chan. Well, his reasoning was is that he had played a good guy in all his movies. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't play well with Asian audiences when someone who's been a good guy all the time turns bad. So yeah. it's like it wouldn't be... It probably wouldn't be successful overseas. Yeah. It's like it wouldn't go well. I don't think it would have been successful stateside. Like, that just is jarring to think of Jackie Chan such a as good a bad guy. Yeah. He's a nice guy. Like, I couldn't do that. <laughs> you just can't I, imagine him as a bad I guy. I physically cannot imagine him as the baddie. The original choices for John Spartan and Simon Phoenix. Care to take a guess? Nick Cage. No, but I would love that. Um, <laughs> that would have been amazing. That would have been as insane as this movie was already. That would have been a, a cherry on top. I'm going to say Van Damme. That is one of them. Okay. That wouldn't have done. I don't think he could have done it justice. I'll be honest with you. Like, No, I mean, which role would you think he was in? I, I thought he was going to play opposite of uh, Stallone. Well, I thought was... he was going to play Phoenix. I'm sorry, I must not have explained correctly. Oh. There were uh, different choices for both roles. Oh, I see. So oh, I Van Damme see. was one of them. Well, okay. Then he would have been in the Spartan role, right? Nope. So I was <laughs> right. Yes. Originally, do you want me to tell you? Or yeah. do you want to take a guess at who oh. would have been John Spartan? Okay, let me guess. Okay. Um, 90s action star. Bruce Willis. No. Mel Gibson. No. We have not watched any of his movies on this channel. And I'm 99.9% .9 certain you have not seen any of his movies. Is is he in action? He was in the 90s and he is still trying to be currently. <gasps> Ponytail? Um, he's a cop now in Louisiana? Yep. Um, what's his name? Or he, name? he was. He had a show where he was actually a. Uh, <laughs> he worked for a sheriff's department. Yes. Um, God, he where, you know who I'm talking about. I do. You got it right. Okay. You just can't think of his name. Hold on. What's his name? Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal. Yes. Yes. It was. Those were the original choices. Uh, oh. Steven Seagal would have been John Spartan. Van Damme would have been Simon Phoenix. Van Damme wanted to do the movie but he didn't want to play the bad guy so then they asked Steven Seagal if he would play the bad guy and he didn't want to play the bad guy so then they moved on 
Steven Seagal could have played the bad guy, but I think it would have been nowhere near as good as Wesley Snipes. Because he brings such like a like caricatured version yeah. of insane villain. Like Joker esque mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, joyous psychopath. Yes. Like- and I just appreciate him so much. Like I'm I will on record say Wesley Snipes was the best thing about this movie. Hands down. Period. Fight me. No, I think I would agree. Like, it, he, he he made it worth watching. <laughs> also, in the beginning, after the trial, whenever John was being frozen, mm-hmm. it said that there's got to be a better way, yeah. more humane way. Uh, Stallone has said that that was probably, like, the most the worst thing he's ever experienced on the set of a movie, like the worst thing he's ever had to do was that whole scene getting in there with the like liquid and everything. Uh-huh. Uh, other than that, he said he thinks the, he thinks the movie is good and was ahead of its time. Uh, sure. Dennis yeah. Leary had another, uh, a different opinion. I bet it's similar <laughs> to the opinion I have. <laughs> I don't know. You enjoyed it. Dennis oh, Leary has okay. been quoted as saying he thinks the movie is a giant piece of shit. Oh, no. Okay. No, no, no. I enjoyed this, but in in a weird kind of way. Um, no, it's not a piece of shit. It is it is a... So, is it one of those you found that was like, you thought it was so bad it's good? Like, is that... Kind does it of, fall into that category? Kind of, it's Okay, listen. It falls into the same category, and I've said this multiple times. It gives me Batman vibes. Like, I'm talking Tim Burton Batman. Like I could hear a little bit of the music and the like set design yeah. when they were underground. Yeah. Um, and the in the lab. Were... <laughs> yeah. In the lab. It well, gave me kind of like cross between Total Recall and Batman vibes. Is like, it specifically because of Batman and Robin and the ice and yes. then Mr. Freeze? <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, I can see where you're drawing those for connections. Arnold. I was looking for him and he was not there. Well, that's that's also one of the reasons I wanted to uh, do a Stallone movie because we've done quite a few Arnold movies and during this time, like these, this was their like big heyday. rivalry kind of. Yeah, they had they had a rivalry mm-hmm. going on. I loved the the Schwarzenegger library and uh, Rambo. Uh, I just loved the weird little call outs, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, speaking of the freezing scene and all that. Uh, Sylvester Stallone had duplicates of like his body Mm -hmm. double Mm -hmm. that was frozen in that. There was like ice pucks. Mm -hmm. He had duplicates of those made and installed in the restaurants, uh, Planet Hollywood. Oh. They had all like movie memorabilia Uh because he was one of the like original investors in that. So you could go eat at Planet Hollywood and be like sitting under naked Sylvester Stallone frozen Sylvester Stallone. Well, put that on my bucket list, you know. Well, Planet Hollywood's no more. Shit. So, <laughs> I mean, we Upset. could try to we could try to find one of those Stallone frozen pucks. If you know where a somewhere. Stallone puck is, holler at your girl. Drop it in the comments. <laughs> also, speaking of different actors for roles, the role of uh, Huxley, Sandra Bullock, mm-hmm. was actually originally... Uh, Lori Petty. She was. She actually filmed some, and uh, there were creative differences, so she left. And Sandra Bullock was brought in. Uh, you would know Lori Petty from uh, A League of Their Own. She was the pitcher that felt like she was always in her okay. sister's shadow. Gotcha. Okay. Kit. Kit. What did you think of Wesley Snipes' hair cut in? Loved it. I love the uh, what is it? The heterochrome whatever the the, the multicolor eyes. eyes yeah i loved that like his whole character did you design. notice they were switching <laughs> no <laughs> that's one of those things you probably missed on a rewatch you'll see his eyes the colors change on like it goes from like brown and blue and they swap i love it i yeah. like it men in tights with the moving mold uh-huh, uh-huh. i think it was yeah <laughs> uh wesley hated it oh no he hated his hair immediately after they were done filming. He shaved his head. But uh, we just got done watching The Last Dance, mm-hmm, the documentary mm-hmm. on Netflix. Uh, and it gave went, me some Rodman vibes. 
that's uh, because whenever Rodman was going through his like phase of mm-hmm. like, coloring his hair and stuff, he was inspired by the character of Simon Phoenix. Oh, I love it. I love it. In love it. this movie. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to ask you this. Oh, boy. How do you think the three seashells work? I, I, so I have a Your question. best guess. Did they show it actually in the bathroom? They showed it, uh, yeah, whenever... Uh, he went into when, when, when he went into his yeah domicile his room that they had acquired him <laughs> I I think I was not focusing on the right area or were they buttons were they movable objects they are three seashells that are you movable just see th- okay all right um I don't know I guess like maybe there's little organic creatures that oh uh like maybe I'm going real real deep down uh-huh. on this. Like, kind of like algae eaters uh, sort of situation, but for your butt. <laughs> like, it's like a little it's a little poop cleaner uh, critter that comes out of the shell and takes care of your situation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no? Is that not what you thought? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think there's ever been a full explanation, and I'll get to why in just a second. But in an interview, uh, Stallone said the way it was explained to him is two of the seashells are used in a chopstick-like fashion. So, like, you would have a seashell, a seashell, I like make a clamp uh-huh. to... Well, it's like a castanet kind of type thing. To grab, pinch, and pull. And then the third seashell was used to... Scrape, wipe the remaining. Well, that just seems like how you get but, hemorrhoids. Like, and there was no explanation of how they would be cleaned and sanitized, or like it seemed like that would be closer. They're all worried about germs and yeah. transmission of fluids that you get in that. You would, yeah. You can't. It would get on your hand. Listen, that's why I went with my <laughs> organic algae eater scenario okay listen like, with the three seashells and the way that's explained it would seem like uh pink eye would be running rampant 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 that's how you get pink eye no no i'm gonna go with my little there's a creature in the shells well, and it's all all organic it's all uh natural it's 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 great i've solved it well this is one another one of those things that yeah, for me, detracts from the movie because one, it feels like uh, another unnecessary like change. I mean, they had bidets. Yeah, like, I was just gonna say like uh, <laughs> bidets were around back in the nineties. Yeah, so, I'm like so, you know, non paper. Crocodile that's, and Dundee drank from one. So. <laughs> like that's that's <laughs> yeah. So it was an unnecessary change just to show that society has changed. Yeah. And it didn't need to. <laughs> and it's also, I think, lazy writing because there was no thought process into how it works, why it's there. Uh, and I know that because uh, reading an article, uh, one of the screenwriters was trying to figure out ways to show society's change and difference. And he called another friend that was a screenwriter and was asking, like, you got any ideas? What do you think? And that person just happened to be in their restroom. And he's like, eh. He was looking around, said, oh, I got this bag of, of I got, seashells. He's like, yeah, I got this like bag of decorative seashells in here. And the screenwriter was like, okay, I'll do something with that. <laughs> oh, in the beginning of the movie, you said they really exploded a building for mm-hmm. this. They did. Uh, and MTV had a promotional tie-in with the movie like some kind of contest and whoever won the grand prize was getting to push the button to demolish the building that's a cool that's yeah. oh man i shit that's a good prize <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i think we covered uh i think it's most of the notes covered everything in conversation pretty much uh oh there is one little one little tidbit trivia part i'll i'll give you oh boy because i just think it's funny uh whenever spartan huxley and garcia are going to hunt for Simon Phoenix and mm-hmm. they're about to walk into the museum and he grabs his little like handheld computer thing and throws mm-hmm. it away and says mm-hmm. use the force Luke Skywalker yeah I just find that funny because I don't know if you know this but Sylvester Stallone auditioned for the role of Han Solo no no 
No, I didn't know that, and no, I don't know. Well, okay, don't don't just jump to conclusions. Anyway, I just can't not see Harrison Ford as Han Solo. Yeah. I guess that's I mean, what it comes uh, down to. I mean, yeah, uh, Stallone said he's he's happy with the way it worked out. Said it worked out for the best because Harrison Ford was great, and he said that he the uh, the look of uh, a laser blaster and the spandex pec- uh, pants just he didn't fit that look. <laughs> Yeah, you want to give it a rating? Yeah, I do. Go for it. Y'all, this is difficult. This is a hard one for me to rate because there's so many conflicting emotions right now. Um, I'm going to give it a seven. I'm going to give it a seven. Overall, I definitely enjoyed it. It was weird as shit. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I've seen it. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the edit so that hopefully I can catch more yeah weird watch weird little things so yeah seven for me what about you as soon as you asked me that the immediate number came to mind was six okay so i think that's what i'm gonna go with that's my first instinctual natural reaction i think six. that is a solid solid rating pippin what about you what'd you rate it i give it 10 beings i'm trying to nap i'm trying to nap well <laughs> As weird of a ride as this was, I think that's probably going to be it for us. Um, Y'all make sure to let us know in the comments, what would you rate it? What are some of your favorite parts? Some of your least favorite parts? Did the sex scene freak you out? Did you think (laughs) that she was his daughter? Uh, These are the questions that I have for you. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like the video. And if you aren't already, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can stay up to date on all of the Summerlin-based shenanigans. Unless you've got anything else. I don't. I think we will call it. Guys, take care. We will see you next time with another first time. Be well. (laughs) Be well. (laughs) 